Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news bulletin today, Thursday, October 18th, 2012. Okay, I'm going to continue here with the social engineering. Uh, authorities investigating death of bully teen Amanda Todd found dead after telling bullying story on YouTube. Canadian authorities have opened a probe into the death of Amanda Todd, a 15-year-old who posted a YouTube video describing years of bullying, then apparently committed suicide a little more than a month later. But it goes on, it says that she described in the video being pressured to show her breasts to a man online. He took a photo and posted it online and sent it to everyone Amanda knew. So, so I don't know why she did that, but and that's what the comments say as well. But Christians slam anti-bully day over gay agenda. Evangelical group to parents, keep your kids at home. So 200 schools have canceled an anti-bullying program after conservative evangelicals warned that it secretly promotes homosexual agendas. So the Southern Poverty Law Center says it designed, it's designed to mix it up lunch day to encourage kids to uh, sit beside someone different to help break up cliques and ease bullying. I've gone through this before about the multiculturalism and diversity, and tr they try to force diversity onto people. And um, it is a good point to make that where most of the violence that goes on or where people are being forced into uh, being diverse, especially with sex in the Middle East and stuff like that, religious tribal sex. I'm not talking about forcing people to be segregated. People self-segregate. They do it in the lunchrooms. They, you see people do it all the time. And you shouldn't feel guilty about doing that. These anti-bullying policies have become a mechanism for punishing Christian students who believe that homosexual behavior is wrong, says an association official. It goes on, it says the groups were already at odds because the Civil Rights Center recently included the Bible-based association on its list of hate groups. So it says, we've become used to the idea of lunatic fringe attacks, says a director at the center, but this one was complete misrepresentation. And in Russia, it's kind of interesting that they actually have a law that uh, bans a promotion or propaganda of homosexuality. So let's see a Russian activist slam gay milk propaganda. So a Russian anti-gay group has asked prosecutors to investigate milk cartons that it claims to promote homosexuality to children. It's kind of interesting, you know, we're talking about defining it as a hate group, that uh, family association group. Uh, but it always goes one way. Remember, I've mentioned that before. You know, it sucks that you even put your, your child in a public school. Um, you know, it's too bad you can't do it privately or something like that. Um, but the curriculums are wrote by the eugenicists, by the social engineers. So when they push all this uh, uh, sexual exploration, uh, they're doing it for a reason. It's through, I've t talked about this before, about uh, political subversion and demoralizing a society. They, uh, they basically use these groups to uh, act as if they're victims, they've been victimized, and to, uh, to harness that, to maintain political control over the society. So anyone that doesn't agree with it or doesn't want to have it shoved down their throat is considered uh, hate speech, right? You're anti this. So it says that uh, this individual from the People's Council says the label is a violation of St. Petersburg anti-gay propaganda law. The rainbow appears on the cartons, a renowned, world-renowned symbol of the gay movement. It's actually part of uh, the Pepsi company that owns that. And it says this is uh, the company that is renowned for actively and aggressively financing and promoting homosexuality. So see, this is this is what I'm talking about, right? This advocacy group for coming out says it's just another sign that the atmosphere in the city uh, since the passage. Well, no, it's not. It's always been like that in Russia. It's been like that around other places. Um, it's just that, you know, like I said, now they get to be victimized. See, now it's this law that's doing this. Well, no, the law was done because there was a lot of people in Russia, the majority of them, that uh, that agreed with it. From October 17th in the Telegraph, being straight no longer normal, students are taught. So the education minister says the government is committed to stamping out homophobic bullying in schools, but this department won't approve teaching material aimed at stamping out heterosexuals or heterosexism. Comes after it was revealed that the students uh, at the high schools, 12 high schools, are being taught that it is wrong and heterosexualists to regard homosexuality as the norm for relationships. So they redefine it now. Teachers are given professional development to learn to identify and stamp out any instances of heterosexist language in the playground, such as, that's so gay. The program defines heterosexism sexism as the practice of positioning heterosexuality as the norm for human relationships, according to the Proud Schools Consultation Report. It involves ignoring, making invisible, or discriminating against non-heterosexual people, their relationships, and their interests. 
heterosexism feeds homophobia. But you know, they're redefining everything. They're re redefining uh, in Canada the term human. What is a human? So, and talking about out of womb uh, abortions, right? Late term abortions, like eight month or eight month year olds out of that have already been born. You can kill them. It's an abortion. It's okay. They're not a human. They're, they don't. They're not a life. A real person. So then you have war against Christianity and Islam. I'll go through this briefly. I got to keep going uh, for time's sake. It says a neoconservative, neocon Christian evangelical political alliance in the U.S. is fond of using the term Judeo-Christian to describe the political philosophic underpinnings of the United States. I'm talking about Zionist and Christian Zionist. And it, it is clear that the Zionist Jewish money is behind the attacks on Christianity and Islam in the Holy Land in Europe. It says the Zionist media has largely succeeded in driving a wedge between Christianity and Islam. And a good example, of course, was that film, um, The Innocence of Muslims, which they say had the, uh, the fingerprints of Zionists and operated Hollywood were all over the film's production and distribution. They say it's typical of Zionist tactics to pin these two groups against each other. We can go in there and check it out. Links will be posted. It talks about all these different attacks of Christians and Israel and that. I'm talking about uh, spray painting Jesus, son of a whore, the price tag for stealing their settlements, um, calling Jesus a monkey, uh, death to Christians. There was a teen, a Jewish teens beating up on Palestinian teen. I remember that. Uh, also spitting, what is it, spitting on Christian clergymen on the streets. Uh, Catholics assaulted, spat on, and spray painted as they defend the cathedral from feminists. Angry pro-abortion feminists mocked, spat on, and spray painted Catholics who were standing guard in front of the cathedral of the Diocese of Posadas in Argentina on Saturday, an event that was caught on video by professional journalists and placed on YouTube, so you can go check that out. They called the feminists professional provocateurs. And it goes on and says the city was left vandalized, subjected, and violated, and, that, and if they had done that to a synagogue, it would have been uh, said that it was an anti-Semitic aggression as it was against Catholics, there's no problem. Argentina's National Women's Encounter attracts thousands of women every year from extremist feminist groups, many of them homosexuals, to angrily demand the acceptance of their political agenda, which includes legalization of abortion and vindication of the homosexual lifestyle. An Ontario official, Catholic schools can't teach this misogynistic pro-life. The education the Education Minister of Ontario, Canada, a professing Catholic who sends her children to Catholic schools, declared on October 10th that the province's publicly funded Catholic schools may not teach students that abortion is wrong because such teachings amount to uh, misogyny, which is prohibited in schools under controversial anti-bullying law. Well, this is a good example of the double standard I was talking about. Um, anything that... Um, uh, they can do anything that they want. They, you know, these feminists and feminine groups, they can go in there and chop crosses down, crucifixes, uh, the, um, that uh, riot, that female riot feminist ban that was in jail in Russia. Um, they went in, in in a church while people were worshiping and totally disrespected them, and somehow we're supposed to feel that this is somehow empowering women. It says that this Bill 13 requires schools to provide a positive school climate that is inclusive and accepting regardless of race and ancestry, blah, 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 right? Uh, it goes on. Man, that's a lot, dude. Talk about diversity, forced diversity. You will accept this. You will tolerate it. The law specifically mandates that schools, Catholic schools included, establish gay-straight alliance organizations. So what am I saying here? Well... Like I said before, I'm for a completely free society so people can make their own decisions. So I'm not talking about creating laws or banning this or that. What I'm saying is that we do not live in a free society. We live in a completely manufactured society. So everything that we see and experience is the result of that manufacturing. So when you see things getting pushed and then other people getting uh, silenced, you can see the agenda right there. And so it, it kind of goes into what I was talking about from the top down as far as engineering society. Uh, to fragment it so that we're all just left to fend for ourselves. Um, it says here, psychiatrists drugging children for social justice. A bombshell is mind-controlled engineers now drugging children for social justice. They said here, in, uh, poor neighborhoods are giving them Adderall, dangerous stimulant, by making false diagnoses of ADHD or no diagnosis at all. Their aim is to promote social justice and to improve academic performance in school. The rationale is the drug kids will now be able to compete with children from wealthier families who attend better schools. I've covered this before. I'm going to leave off with this quote and move on. We've decided as a society that it is too expensive to modify the kids' environments. We have to modify the kids, said Anderson. 
So, and he's a pediatrician. Um, and that's the thing. And now they're going to start doing genetic screening. That's now voluntar voluntary, right? But eventually it'll be mandatory, moral screening. So not just genetics for physical attributes, but uh, moral screening. So are you going to be violent? Are you prone to violence? So Florida passes plan for racially based academic goals. The Florida State Board passed a plan that sets goals for students in math and reading based upon the race. By 2018, it wants 90% of Asian students, 88% of white students, 81% of Hispanics, and 74% of black students to be reading at or above the grade level. Well, they don't really. The point of education, if you know, the woman from the Reagan era, Department of Education, went around uh, to basically kill individuality and, 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 and find the leaders and uh, uh, kill their leadership abilities to question and be skeptical. And uh, for those that are Christians and have family values and stuff like that, to, to, to quash that as well. But uh, also to kill creativity. That's the point of education, to make them uh, uh, dumb them down. It's, it's for strategic purposes like uh, eugenics and that. Because you're a threat to them, to the elites. I just watched a video uh, by this individual. Um, and he has pretty interesting little theory or something like that. But I guess it's based off some research that... Uh, that you know this is this is true right kind of like some stereotypes are kind of true asians i'm you know i'm white i'm gonna admit asians are pretty damn smart you know most asians that i've known have been smarter than me way way more smarter and i don't consider myself all that intelligent and i've seen black people um that are more intelligent than me a lot of them actually when i was in college came from africa though um and then the ones as far as hispanics go you know they don't when they're when, when they're coming from their families they're just they're just gotta work that's it and the blacks that are in this in the United States, a lot of them, they're just trying to get by. So I mean, the quote education or reindoctrination or brainwashing, you know, one plus one and ABCs, isn't really on their high priority. It's being able to feed their families, if that even if that includes uh, selling some pot or something like that to pay for the bills, which does happen. Also, you have what Hispanics and blacks are usually less likely to. Um, receive that programming that, that you know that program that brainwashing they fight it they you they always do which I commend them for it must be in their genetics or something like that whereas whites and Asians they just accept it lock stock and barrel all the brainwashing right which is why you have Europe and the US you know good neocons uh, you know fighting the the global war on terrorists and all that not questioning anything um, good consumers and in Asia you got Asia right like in China in Japan uh, but this is what the leftists will say. To expect less from one demographic or more from another is just a little off base. No, it's not. So if everyone was raised in the same, uh, in the same, uh, you know, started from the same background, they probably would reach the same goals. But scientists say creativity part of mental illness. So if you like to express yourself through painting, writing, or other form of artistic actions, scientists now say that you must be suffering from mental illness or some kind. Mainstream media outlets are now regurgitating the words of the experts. It shouldn't be surprising that 50% of the U.S. is, by definition of the psych uh, psychiatrist of the nation, mentally ill. And the whole thing about psychiatry was for mind control, so, of the masses. It had to do with uh, Edward, uh, Edward Bernays, and it had to do with um, uh, Freud. So a new addition to the DSM is, and perhaps creativity may soon be added to the massive textbook, which labels people who are shy, eccentric, or have unconventional romantic lives uh, as mentally ill. Also, there's anti-authority disorder, so if you don't like being a slave, you could have a mental disorder. Be medicated. American schools, breeding grounds for compliant citizens from October 15th. Public school reform is justified in dehumanizing language of national security, which increasingly legitimizes the transformation of schools of the surveillance and police state. Students are subjected to discipline uh, apparatuses, which limit their capacity for criminal thinking, critical thinking, mold them into consumers, test them into submission, and strip them of any sense of social responsibility, and convince large numbers of the poor minority students that they are better off under the jurisdiction of the criminal system than being valued members of the public school. And this article was scrubbed. Homeland Security graduates first core of Obama's brown shirts, the Homeland Security Youth. 230 kids, 18 to 24, recruited from the President's AmeriCorps volunteers, represents the first wave of the DHS Youth Corps. And back to re-education camps, my 12-year-old son's so big I can't make him go to school. They're facing court over the son's truancy, so he doesn't want to go to the brainwashing, right? They're having a problem with that. And I still have more, but that's all the time I have to get to today. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.